to start today the Bereisha Shir, not Parshish Bereisha, but the Bereisha Shir, as I mentioned earlier in the Shir. Uh, the exact time, I'm not sure of working through a schedule still, but once a week we'll be learning something in Bereisha's Pasik by Pasik, how to understand creation to the extent human being can, the purpose of creation, Adam, Chava, etc. We've just been talking about that in the Das, Tamura Shir, Ramchal, creation, purpose of creation, Lahetiv, the Bar Shalom wants to do good for human beings. All of this is directly connected to Ashes, Bereshis, the purpose of creation and the purpose of man in all of creation. Before we start Bereshis, we have to remember something we learned in Hilchas Tshuva before Yom Kippur. Rambam Pere Gimel in Hilchas Tshuva told us about the 24 people who have no share in the world to come. And most, uh, or a good portion of these 24 categories have nothing to do with someone that does an Aveira. Many of these 24 people are people who simply don't think like Jews. They have bad hashkafas. And this, notwithstanding all the Torah and the mitzvahs that a person does, if anybody wants to check up on this, go to the end of Masech, the Sanhedrin. The Rambam wrote the 13 principles of faith as his introduction to the Perek Chelek. It's a Perek, a Perek in Sanhedrin, at the end of Sanhedrin, which we call Chelek, and everybody knows what that means. Every week before we begin Perkei Omos, we say, Kol Yisrael Yeshlem Chelek La'olam Haba. Every Jew has a share in the world to come. <clears throat> so we, that's a Mishnah, Kol Yisrael Yeshlem Chelek La'olam Haba. It's a Mishnah at the end of Sanhedrin, and we call the Perek of Gomorrah on that mission, we call it Chelek. So the first, the mission makes a very broad statement. Every year has a share in the world to come. <clears throat> and then the mission goes on and gives us exceptions to people who don't have a share in the world to come, particular people. And then the Gemara goes on and discusses this concept of who uh, doesn't have a share in the world to come. As an introduction to Perek Chelek, introduction, the Rambam wrote 13 principles of faith, from which later was organized what we call the 13 Animamins, based upon the Rambam's 13 principles of faith. So if you open the Gemara Sanhedrin, you go to the back of the Gemara, the Pirish HaRambam on the Mishnah, look up Chelek, and you'll see the Rambam has an introduction, including the 13 Ikarim. The Rambam writes there in the Hakdama to Chelek that if a person believes in all of these 13 principles, but he does all kinds of terrible averis, he has a Chelek in the world to come. He has a Chelek Lolam Haba. For the Aveiris, he's going to have to go to Gehenna, whatever Kaddish Baruch Hu needs in order to purge this person of sin will be done. But the person is going to tell him how. However, the Rambam says, if a person does tremendous amount of Torah mitzvahs, but he doesn't believe in one of these 13 principles of faith, he has no share in the world to come. So making sure your brain is a Jewish brain, is more important in many aspects than making sure what, how many chumras you're doing in your life. You have to think like a yid. The Rambam teaches us through the Gemara how to think like a yid. The Rambam in Hilchas Tshuva described 24 people the Rambam says, each one of these 24 people that I just enumerated, even though they're Jewish, they have no share in the world to come. One of those 24 people, one of the categories, is called a kaifa b'tayra, a person who denies the tayra. He denies it, it's a kaifa. What does it mean to deny the tayra? I'm reading now Rambam Perakim Halachaches. It's not in your handout. It wasn't a handout before Yom Kippur. If a person says the Torah is not from Hakadosh Baruch Hu, 
The whole Torah is from Hashem, but there's one Pasuk in there that was added by someone else. Afilu Tevachas. Person says, the whole Torah is from Hashem. There's one uh, word that was added by someone. Im Oma Moshe Amorimi Piatzman. He says, Moshe said it himself. Moshe added a word. Moshe took out a word. Moshe added one word. I raise a kaifa betayi. The person's a kaifa betayi has no share in the world to come. So before we learn Bereshis, before we start the whole Torah, <clears throat> we need to have a very important basic understanding. That every ice and every word we learn and that we hear from a Balkaira or we do Shnai Mikra Vecha Targum, that's very important, Rabbi Isai. I emphasize this every year before Parashas Bereshis comes up, the week of Parashas Bereshis. Chazal and Masech the Brochus and Davches, Amir Aleph, say Chayiv. It's not a nice thing to do. It's a mitzvah to Rabbonon, according to many. <clears throat> so mitzvah Rabbonon to read the parasha twice with the Targum. <clears throat> and that's because Targum was the way, <clears throat> excuse me, people understood the Torah. Unfortunately, the daily language of Jewish people became Aramaic. And they understood the Torah through Aramaic. For today, you still have to do Shnayim Mikra Vecha Targum, but in order to fully understand it, you have to learn Rashi, you have to learn and read it with the English. You need to do something to understand what you're saying. It's a mitzvah with Rabbanon Shnayim Mikra Vecha Targum, which means to me so that it's not a tremendous burden. On Sunday, a person would do from the beginning of the Pasha till Shani, on Monday, Shani to Shlishi. On Tuesday, Shlishi to Rabbi, etc. By the time Shabbos comes, you have a little piece of the end of the Pasha to do, and you need the whole Pasha and Mikkav Echetagam. That process could be 20 minutes or half an hour a day. By the time Shabbos comes, you're familiar with the whole Pasha, the Rashi, etc. So as we begin, get ready to hear Pasha's Parashas, we need to have this fundamental belief in the Kepala that every single letter in the Torah came from the Rabbi Nishalaylam. And if a person says, Moshe Rabbeinu added something, then he's a kaif of Torah, and he has no share in the world to come. Now, it is true that there are several places in the Torah, one notable dealing with Rashi, where it appears that Rashi say for Torah had a vav that we don't have in our Sefer Torah. That has nothing to do with this discussion. That discussion is about a Messiah. Some Sifre Torah passed down from generations had a vav, and some Sifre Torah didn't. But if you ask the person who has the Sefer Torah with that vav in Pasha's Truma, He'll tell you the vav is there because that's what Hashem told Moshe to write down. If you ask the person with the Sefer Torah without the vav in Pasha's Truma, he'll tell you there's no vav there because that's what Hashem told Moshe to write down. Both of them are looking at their uh, Sifrei Torah, at their respective Sifrei Torah, as the Sefer Torah that HaKadosh Baruch Hu told Moshe to write down. There is a difference of opinion based upon the transmission of Sefer Torah, which is the one that HaKadosh Baruch Hu told Moshe to write. But neither person is going to say, Moshe added the Vav in Truma, or Moshe took out the Vav in Pasha's Truma. That's not the discussion. The discussion is a question of how Hashem gave Moshe the Torah, is there a Vav, is there not a Vav? But nobody's talking about the fact that Moshe personally added or deleted. If you get Hashem into that discussion, then a person becomes a Kaifa Betaira and he has no share in the world to come. The famous question is who wrote the last eight Sukkim in the Sefer Torah at Mizrahi Sakracha? We won't go into that. It's Machlekes in the Gemara in Baba Basra. The last eight sukkim talk about Moshe Rabbeinu dying. It says Moshe went up to the mountain, and Hashem said this to him and this to him, and then it says Moshe died, 
And it says the Jews mourned Moshe Rabbeinu. Well, if Moshe died, how did he write these psukim? It's a machlek in the Gemara who wrote those eight psukim. It may have been Yoshua ben Nun. It may have been Moshe himself, Bedema. That's also not part of this discussion because either way, it's HaKadosh Baruch Hu instructing the writing of the Sefer Torah. No human being using his own independent wisdom to decide what should be there and what should be deleted. Again, as we begin Bereshis, from the letter base of Bereshis till the Laman at the end of Ezeis HaBrocha, Le'enei Kol Yisrael, every letter in there is HaKadosh Baruch Hu telling Moshe. And we need to get that into our Kepala in order to have a Yiddish Kepala in this subject. Chas mm-hmm. if a person doesn't understand this, doesn't believe this, reject, let's see the Torah, a person rejects this, a person can become a Kaifa B'tayra Chas v'sholem, and has no share in the world to come. Well, let's take a look at the Ramban. We just looked at the Rambam, Maimonides, in the Halacha. And now let's look at Nachmanides, Ramban, start looking at it. The Ramban, again, we're not learning Parsha right now. We're learning the Parsha of Horatius, which will continue Blined the next week. And we'll continue. We're just going to start with the part of the Ramban for this week. The Ramban wrote, Nachmanides wrote an introduction to learning Chumash. And in this introduction, it gives us various principles that we need to carry with us as we learn every Pasuk in the Hamisha Chum Shetayim. So the Ramban begins, you have it in your handout. Horatius. Moshe Rabbeinu Kosef HaSeif Razeh Im HaToyra Kula Mipiv Shel HaKadosh Baruch What we just learned in Maimonides, Nachmanides repeats. Moshe Rabbeinu wrote this book, meaning Bereshis, and with that he wrote the whole Torah from, quote-unquote, Kavriachal, the mouth of HaKadosh Baruch Then the Ramban, in this paragraph, discusses when Moshe Rabbeinu wrote the Torah. We know that as you read the Sefer Torah, Pasha by Pasha, let's say uh, you're in, you're in Pasha's Kisisa, at the end of Shemosh. In Pasha's Kisisa, you already have the Chet Ego. Moshe Rabbeinu already came down with the second Luchos. And now, what for, for everything that happens after that, let's think about the Maisa Maragun. Think about the story of Bilam and Bullock. Those events have not happened yet after the Maisa Ego. And I'm picking the Maisa Ego for a specific reason now that I don't want to go into it. The Ramban deals with when all this was done. But let's historically just go to the point in the year 2449. Moshe Rabbeinu has come down with the second Luchas on Yom Kippur. And Moshe Rabbeinu has been taught the whole Torah by the Rabbi Nishalaylam. We spent 40 days and 40 nights <coughs> learning the whole Torah. And then there was the Maisa Egel. And then Moshe Rabbeinu prayed, and Moshe Rabbeinu went back up to get the second Luchas. He came down with the second Luchas on Yom Kippur 2449. He's already learned the whole Torah. What does it mean he's already learned the whole Torah? Pasha's Shalach, the Miraglim, hasn't happened. Bullock and Bilam have not happened. Kairach has not happened. At the end of Pasha's Kairach, you have the Pasha of the Matnas Kahuna. The things that a Kohen gets, his truma, etc. These events haven't happened yet. What does it mean that Moshe Rabbeinu had the whole title? This is what Ramban is talking about in summary form in this first paragraph. And this turns out to be a machlekes in the Gemara in Gitten and Daf Samach, which I don't want to go into. It's a machlekes where the Torah Megillah Megillah Nitna or Torah Chatuma Nitna. Megillah Megillah Nitna means <clears throat> Moshe Rabbeinu wrote down the Torah on separate pieces of parchment. Meaning, after the story of the Miraglim, the Rabbanu Shalom told Moshe Rabbeinu, write the following. And Moshe Rabbeinu wrote it down on a piece of parchment. After the story of Bullock and Bilam, the Rabbanu Shalom told Moshe Rabbeinu, write this down. He wrote it down. He had another piece of parchment. 
And this continued and continued. At the end of Moshe Rabbeinu's life, he sewed together all the parchments and it became a Sefer Torah. That's called Megillah Megillah Nitna. The Torah was given a separate Megillah, separate parchments. The other man, the Amen, the Gemara holds Torah, Hasuma Nitna. The Torah was given as one sealed book, meaning that the Jewish people went through the 40 years in the Midbar. Many different events happened. At the end of the 40 years, HaKadosh Baruch Hu told Moshe, now write it all down as follows. Okay, there are different problems with each of these sheetas, and each of them have to root them. But whether the Torah was given Megillah Megillah or Hasuma, Machlekes Nigamar and Afsama, and the Ramban here, <coughs> in summary fashion, deals with it in the first paragraph. The question that the Ramban is going to deal with, and that we're going to deal with now, is from the point that the Rabbanu Shalom starts commanding Moshe. We have Psukim that say, Vaidava Hashem Moshe Leinu. <clears throat> Moshe Rabbeinu was born in Pasha Shmos. And after that, we have a lot of Psukim all over the Torah, except in Pasha Tetzavah, where Moshe Rabbeinu's name is not mentioned. Vaidava Hashem Moshe Leinu. Vaidava Hashem Moshe Leinu. God spoke to Moshe and he said, Why doesn't the book of Bereshis begin, Vaidava Hashem Moshe Leinu, Bereshis Bolakim Sashmai Vesarans? If every letter in the Torah, is God spoken to Moshe Rabbeinu? How did Moshe Rabbeinu know what was created on day one? How did he know Vayomer Elokim Yehi'or? How did he know when animals were created? How did he know the event of Adam and Chava? How did he know all these things, Moshe Rabbeinu? Moshe Rabbeinu didn't come to the world for over 2,000 years after those events. How did Moshe Rabbeinu know this? As the Rosh Hashanah told him. Not only did the Rosh Hashanah tell him about these events, the Rosh Hashanah said, this is how these events are to be written in the Sefer Torah. <clears throat> so the same way the whole Torah, when Moshe Rabbeinu is telling us what God told him, that's the introduction. The whole Torah should begin. The first part of the Torah should be, God spoke to Moshe and he said, There's no other way that Moshe knew these things except God told him. So why doesn't the Torah begin like Moshe Moshe Leimah? That's question one. Question two is, the Torah, except when you come to Chumash Devarim, the Torah is always talking about in a third person. By Yedavar Hashem, and God spoke, El Moshe to Moshe, Lema saying. It's almost as if there's a third person somewhere here that's telling me a story, God spoke to Moshe. This is not the way the books of the Nevi'im are written. The books of the Nevi'im are usually written Vayedavar Hashem Eli Lamar, God spoke to me. Hayedavar Hashem Eli Lamar, the word of God came to me. We don't have in the Chumash, we get to Chumash Devorim, we have some exceptions, but in the, in, in the four books out of five, well, Moshe Rabbein is not mentioned in Bereshis, but in Shmos, Vayikra, and Bamidbar, we have, and God said to Moshe, who is telling us this? Who is, the, uh, who is the storyteller here? Why doesn't it just say, Vayidabra Hashem, Eli Lamar? God spoke to me, because we know that Moshe is the one who God is speaking to. And this is unlike the other books in the field. So Abban is going to deal with these two basic questions now in paragraph two. Aval Hoya Ha'inian, I'm sorry, right before uh, paragraph two, the last two lines. Al Kalpanim Hoya Nachain Sheyichtai Betchila Sefer Bereshis it would appear, the Ramban asked, that it would be appropriate to begin the whole Torah with the standard passage. And God spoke to Moshe and said the following. The reason why God told Moshe to write it Stam, without this introduction that God spoke to Moshe and said, in the beginning God created heaven and earth, Moshe Rabbeinu was instructed not to write the Torah as the Nevi'im would eventually write their books, God spoke to me. Yecheskel all over his Sefer says, and God spoke to me and said, the Torah is not written that way. Yimiyu uses the same words, God spoke to me. Again, Moshe Rabbeinu doesn't use that kind of 
uh, phraseology, God spoke to me. It says, God spoke to Moshe as if there's a third person here. Moshe Rabbeinu was instructed by Hashem to write the Sefer Torah as if there's a third person telling the story. There's Hashem, there's Moshe, and someone is telling the story of God speaking to Moshe. It's as if someone's talking about two other people. I call these two other, two other, uh, the Rav Shalom and Moshe Rabbeinu. It's as if some third person is telling the story. Nei came, and because of that, <clears throat> we'll see why this was done. And therefore, Moshe Rabbeinu's name is not even mentioned in the Torah until he's born. Even though, as we just learned in Rambam Hilchus Tshuva, and as Nachmanides told us in the very first sentence of his Hakdama, Moshe Rabbeinu wrote every letter in the Sefer Torah from the quote-unquote Kaviyocho, mouth of God. Bereshus Kim was God telling Moshe, Moshe, pick up the feather and write down Beis, Reish, Aleph, Shin, Yud, Sof. And Moshe Rabbeinu wrote, even though that's the way it occurred, there is no introduction of Ayyadav Rashem El Moshe Lamar. And there's no mention of Moshe until he's born. And even when he's born, it sounds like two other, it sounds like another person telling the story about God and Moshe. So Moshe Rabbeinu is not mentioned until he's born. And even after he's born, it's like a third party telling the story. And now the Ramban next paragraph talks about Chumash Devarim, Mishnah Torah, where Moshe, seen, where Moshe does speak in the first person. God spoke to me. We're not going to deal with Chumash Devarim, it's Mishnah Torah. But we have the standing question of why isn't Moshe mentioned until he's born? Why doesn't the Torah open up and say, God told Moshe the following, Bresh Balakim. And once Moshe is born, why are we talking in third party? Next paragraph. The reason why God instructed Moshe to write the Torah in this way is because it's chronologically correct. The Torah existed before the world was created. The Gemara of and Afnun Dalai gives us a list of things that existed before the world existed. And one of the things that existed was the Torah. We'll talk more about that uh, probably next week's Bereshit year. The Torah, not the way we have it today, Bereshit Baralakim. There was a Torah with the letters that we know to be the Torah, there was a Torah that existed before creation. Certainly the Torah existed before Moshe's birth. As we have a Kabbalah from our Chachamim, from Chazal, we have a Mesorah. The Torah was written in heaven Black fire and white fire. Now for us, the black fire is the black ink. The white fire is the cloth. So uh, the original form of the Sefer Torah was black fire and white fire. When we think about what a Sefer does, the Svasemis explains, we talk many times about Torah's Hanigla, the revealed Torah, and Torah's Hanister, the hidden Torah. We talk about Torah's Hanister, people refer, are referring usually to Kabbalah. 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 People are referring to Kabbalah, the secrets of the Torah. So as Sarsemis explains, you have a blank piece of parchment. The sofer now takes his feather, ink, and creates a base to start the Sefer Torah Beratius. The Svasema says the Sefer has done two things if he understands what he's done. He's now written a, be- a base with black ink, and that's what everybody can see now. Black base. What's underneath the base is now parchment that is white that is covered by the base. It's now hidden. There's a hidden piece of the parchment under that dark ink that is now still white, it is still white parchment, 
but it's hidden over by the black ink. So the the Sarsemis explains that when a person, a cipher writes a safer turn and he understands what he's doing, he's not only creating Torah's Hanigla, the revealed Torah, the bays, he's also creating the hidden bays under the black ink of that base, and with it he's creating Torah Sanista, the Kabbalah, because the Torah Sanista lives inside the Torah Sanigla. As we said earlier <coughs> in the Das Tavunos, the Neshama resides inside the Guf and uses the Guf for its purpose. The Ha'oras Ponim resides inside the Hastoras Ponim and uses the Hastoras Ponim for its own Ha'oras Ponim purposes. And the Torah's Hanista is hidden inside the Torah's Hanigla and percolates in it and gives it a special meaning. That original Torah that was in existence before the world was created was a black, a black fire on a white fire. He named Moshe Kesefer Amatik Misefer Kadman. Therefore, what was Moshe doing? Moshe was told by Kodesh Baruch who he was a Matik. Moshe Rabbeinu was now copying into human physical letters from this black fire and white fire Torah. It wasn't new. It wasn't something that God said, Moshe, I want to write a new book, and you're going to be the writer of this book. Just listen to what I have to say. The Rabban Shalom said, Moshe Rabbeinu, here is the Eish Horagabe Eish Levana, Copy it. I'm going to teach you how to copy from there so it'll be a Torah that the Jewish people will be able to observe. But Moshe Rabbeinu right now is a ma'atik. He's simply copying from the pre-existing Torah. <coughs> and therefore, the Torah is written, it starts off stam. There's no way Dab Hashem Moshe Lamar, which would make me think that this is something new that the Rabboni Shalom is teaching Moshe some kind of new book, the Torah begins, Beresh Bolikim. This is something that existed before. And Moshe Rabbein was not even mentioned. He's not an author. He is only there to copy from the pre-existing Holy Sefer Torah of Eish Chayra Gabe Eish Levana. And then he's born, and he's just part of that Eish Chayra Gabe Eish Levana. And we continue there by Daba Shema Moshe Lema because he's not the author of this book. This is the book through which God is telling Moshe to copy the pre existing Eshra Gabi Esh Levon. This is true and clear. It is clear and true that the whole Torah, from the beginning of Bereshus until the last words, Le'enik kol Yisrael, was said by the Rabbana Shalom to the ears of Moshe, again, without getting into the debate in the Gemara in Baba Basa about who wrote the last eight Pesukim. Every letter is coming from the Rabbana Shalom to Moshe Rabbeinu, mm-hmm. and it's coming through that fire Torah of Eish Shchor Agabe Eish Levana, which Moshe Rabbeinu hears from HaKadosh Baruch about how to extrapolate our Torah for Edi Matzah and Pesach, and putting on tefillin, how you extrapolate that from the black fire and the white fire. Kin Yishinem Elahal Mankiv Yikor Elay Eskod Rama Elav Anikais Asseh Bidyoy. Haydienu Tchila, in Yimbriyas HaShemai Ra's Fault Svam. The first thing that God tells us is the creation of heaven and earth and everything that went along with it. Kaloma, Briyas Kol Nivra, Yonu Betachtoinen. Im Kain, Kol Anema Benavua, Mimaisa Merkov, Mimaisa Beresh, from Akub HaMlachom, told us, Am, told us, Im Arba HaKocha Shebetachtoinen. Everything that's included in what we call the Maisa Merkov and the Maisa Beresh's, which we'll go into the next week in, uh, we learn Beresh's again, in the, in the Beresh's year. There's something called Maisa Merkov, it's the first chapter or so in Sefer Yecheskel, Haftor of Shavuos, where Yecheskel says the clouds open and I saw a vision of Kaviyacho God, and that's the Merkov, the chariot, so to speak. That chariot, even though it appears in Sefer Yecheskel, it is known to Moshe Rabbeinu, and it is in this Torah, even though 
If you look, you can't find the Maisa Merkava, but that's because you have to know how to read the Taira. Who Maisa Beratius, and the true understanding of Maisa Beratius, again, next week in the Pasha, she will take a look at what Maisa Beratius is. The Rambam in Hilfus Yisraeli Atari gives us definitions for these things. And including in this is what the Chachomim have as a Messiah. Told us in Arba HaKoyches Shebet Achrayim the um, the potential and the strength of the four major categories on earth. Kata Machzavim, Katze Machadoma, V'Nefesh HaTnuah, V'Nefesh HaMedaberes. We have these, we have this um, hierarchy that we use when we talk about creation. We say there's the domain, Someach Chai Medaber. There's, quote unquote, the uh, universe of the domain, those things that are lifeless, stones, rock, uh, diamonds. This is the domain. They are, so to speak, lifeless. They don't grow in any which way. Then the second universe is the tzomeach, things that grow. They are living, plants, trees, flowers. The next universe is the chai, the thing that is living. Living means, according to Ramban, koach hatenua, things that can move. Plants do not walk from one place to the other place. Trees don't walk from the one place to the other place. Unless uh, you're watching a horror movie, generally speaking, uh, from, my, from my childhood years, I remember the March of the Wooden Soldiers, where trees were able to walk around. They considered March of the Wooden Soldiers as a child's movie, but until you get a little old, it's kind of a horror movie. But trees, plants, flowers can't walk around. So they're called somea. Whatever life they have in them is that they can grow and sprout, but they can't move. The next universe is the Chaya, the animal kingdom, where they can move. And that's a whole separate category. The next category is the Medaber, which means man. Man can speak. Well, it doesn't necessarily mean speak. It means that man can think. And because he can think with a brain, he expresses his thoughts through the Koach Hadibur. And that's what the Pasuk says. Where we mentioned the Pasuk earlier about the recipe that God used to create man. God formed man from the dust of the earth. That's his goof. He put a living soul, a breath of a living soul in this nostril. Man became a living being. So that sounds to us like he was alive. His eyes opened up. His ears were able to hear. His fingers moved. The famous Targum Unculus, Unculus as we get ready to do Shnaya Mikra Vecha Targum, is the Unculus. Unculus is a Tana. He is a holy Tana. He is a Ger. He is a, uh, in the family of Titus the Russia, who destroyed the second Beis Hamikdash. The Gemara talks about in Gittin, the conversation that Unculus, according to our Girsa, had with Uncle Titus about converting. And Uncle Titus had this discussion about um, why would you convert? But Unculus eventually becomes a Ger, and he becomes the reauthor, so to speak, of the Unculus, the Targum Unculus Halatoru, which Chachomer tell us we should read every week in Shnai Mikra, the Echad Targum. Man is called a Medaber. He speaks it's because he has a brain through which he can express himself. And on that Pasuk, where it says, by he a man became a living being, Uncle says, God took dust of the earth, put a breath of neshama in his nostril, and now man became a ruach memalala, he was able to talk. That's what nefeshaya means, a living thing in terms of the human uh, universe, means that the man can speak and express ideas clearly, which comes from his brain. Now that's something that we take for granted. But going back to the Wizard of Oz, I remember if it was the straw man, wherever it was, but someone told Dorothy, I know a lot of people that can talk, 
they have no brains. So it's a Hiddish sometimes that a person uh, can talk, has a brain, or a person has a brain can talk. A person is able to express clear ideas in a rational way, and that's a human being. So we have the four universes. We have the domain, the tzomea, chaimedavet, the inanimate, the non-living, like rocks, the plant, the animal which can move around, and the man who can speak and express an idea. All of this is in the Torah, and all of this was explained by Kaddish Baruch Hu to Moshe Rabbeinu, and Moshe Rabbeinu understood how each of these kingdoms operates, the domain that's Omer Chaim Medaber, until, as we'll learn next week, Ramban says, if you ask Moshe Rabbeinu, you take Moshe Rabbeinu with a, it's in the desert, obviously, but we know there are a lot of things going on in the desert. But a person had some plants <coughs> in the desert, said, Moshe Rabbeinu, my plants are not growing well, Moshe Rabbeinu can tell you exactly what you need to do. If somebody's uh, cattle were not doing well, Moshe Rabbeinu can tell you exactly what you need to do with the cattle. Because all of this Chochmah is in the Torah. There's no Chochmah that's not in the Torah, except you have to know how to read the Torah. And again, that black fire that's on the white fire, there's a lot going on under that black fire. There's a lot going on under the black ink that Moshe Rabbeinu understood. And therefore, he understood man, animal, plant, rock. He understood all these things individually and how they interact with each other. All of this was told by God to Moshe Rabbeinu. Briyasam, how they were created. Kechaisam, their strengths. Umahusam, the essence. Umasehem, and what they can do. Vaafisas han of Sodomahem, and how they can become, how they, how they would end. The end, how plants live and die, how animals live and die, how man lives and dies how rocks, um, uh, rocks can be destroyed, how steel can be melted. All these things were explained to Moshe Rabbeinu. Everything is written in the Sefer Torah, the Perush, or either explicitly or it's hinted at in a way that only great men understand what's written in there and all these secrets. And to Moshe Rabbeinu, the greatest of all Moshe Rabbeinu, he understood these secrets because the Baal Shalom taught the black fire and the white fire to him. And although when Moshe Rabbeinu transcribed it by the word of God into words we can read, which is mezuzah and tefillin and tzitzis and all these things, and the creation of the world, and Adam and Chava, and Yaakov Avinu, and all these Mitzrayim, inside all of these things understood properly, are everything and every chachma in the world, and that includes understanding the Maisa Merkava, which is in Yecheskel, and the Maisa Bereshis, which deals with um, the way God created the world. Everything is here. We'll continue bringing that the next week in the Ramban. Take a look at the Rambam uh, as to what Maisa Bereshis and Maisa Merkava are. We'll see some very interesting Chedushim in the Rambam Maimonides, which will help us understand the Ramban Nachmanides. Everybody have a wonderful day, a healthy day. Uh, tomorrow will begin at 10 a.m. with Das Tavunos, and then we'll move into Parshish as the Parshish Hashavua. <coughs> Medshem on Sunday will begin with our uh, Sheep Kutz, so to speak, schedule. Um, for the for the shiurim, we will, as I said, we'll continue shkolim, make a siyum. I'll move on to shavias. We'll introduce a men's gemara shir, the bereisha shir, and obviously the yeshaya das tvuna shir. And there'll be a schedule that will be sent out. Everybody, please take care of yourselves. Do the things you should do. Don't do things you shouldn't do. Don't take any risks. There's a lot of things that are being said out there that are simply, they they said with, by men with long beards and long payas and very, very fancy hats that are uh, unfortunately not Torahidic. So I'm going to make a comment about that. First of all, Rabosha Weiss, great Paisic in Yerushalayim, 
<clears throat> said yesterday very clearly that people should be machmer in taking care of their health and their lives, more machmer than whatever the Misrat HaBriyot says. The Misrat HaBriyot is dealing with a lot of political issues and they're doing all kinds of compromises to make different people happy so that a government doesn't collapse. But I'll be saying, oh, there are humors that people need to do that are more than even the Misrat HaBriyot are saying, and people need to use a seichel yosha, their basic common sense to understand how to protect your health. <clears throat> Let's get rid of the shtuyot of all the conspiracy theories. Let's understand that we're dealing with a very, very dangerous, dangerous virus out there, highly contagious. It is not the flu. And while some people get over it, younger people, older people, some people get older over it, and they say, hey, it was nothing. Other people on Har HaZesim and Har Menuchas, they didn't get over it. And today, Nebuchadnezzar saw there are over 2,000 such people that are in Har Menuchas, Har HaZesim, and other places because they simply didn't get over it. So the Tzav HaShor, what God wants us to do, is very clear. Every generation has all kinds of Nesiyonis. We have an Nesiyon here. The Baruch Shalom wants us to take care of our health. He doesn't want us to die. When he wants us to die, he tells us how to die. The Baruch Shalom taught Moshe Rabbeinu, and I read the Zorah, Gilead Rayesh, Vichestamim, before you do it, you die. The Rebbe Shalom said to Moshe Rabbeinu during the Shas Hashmad, there are no other rules. The Rebbe Shalom told Moshe Rabbeinu, if, he, if the guy is Machav and Lahav or Adas, there are different rules. There are a lot of different rules. Going to a Tish, Moitzoi Shabbos, or Moitzoi Yonder, is not a Yehorit Bal Yavar. I, I, I haven't learned all of Shulchan Aruch, and I haven't learned every single Rambam, but I am very, very much aware of in Shulchan Aruch and in Yerodei. And there's no one that ever says that going to a Tish is Yehor Goyal. There's no one that ever says that the Chumrah to go to Mikvah every morning is Yehor Goyal. Nobody ever says such a thing. So, we need to take care of ourselves. Now, someone during Cholom Sukkis asked me about this. But there are so many great men that are saying some things. I said, okay. And there are many great men that are saying the opposite. But here's the bottom line. I'm going to say something now, and then people are going to go, oh, I can't believe Lublin just said that. I can't believe he said that. The Gemara in Saita and in other places, when the Gemara is talking about things that will happen before Mashiach Tzitkenu comes, one of the statements is, or in Sanhedrin, Talmidei Chachomim Mesma'atim. There'll be fewer Talmidei Chachomim. That's what it sounds like. Before Mashiach comes, there'll be fewer Talmidei Chachomim. The Maral, if you have a Maral at home, the volume is Netzach Yisrael, and it's Perik Lamed Hay, chapter 35 of Netzach Yisrael. Maral talks about these Gemaras and the signals that Mashiach is coming. Maral talks about <clears throat> this Gemara, Talmide Chachom and Mismatim. We said Talmide Chachom will become few. Now let's make believe I didn't say Maral. Lublin saying his own drush. Rabbi Isai, the Gemara says one of the signs of, of the Mashiach coming is Talmide Chachom Mismatim. There'll be fewer Talmide Chachom. But the Gemara, if that's what the Gemara meant, the Gemara would have said Talmide Chachom and Ma'atim. Talmide Chachom will be few. What does Talmid Chacham misma'atim mean? Talmid Chacham will become smaller. It should say, Talmid Chacham, there's a difference between becoming smaller and becoming fewer. If you want me to tell me that Talmid Chacham will be fewer, you say Talmid Chacham ma'atim. Talmid Chacham misma'atim means that the Talmid Chacham that will be there will be less. And therefore, Rabbi Isai, I have concluded that what the Gemara means is that before Mashiach comes, Talmid HaChom Mismata means that there will be Talmid HaChomim 
who will be reduced. There'll be a lot of Torah, there'll be Talmud HaChachamim, but they'll be reduced. What does reduced mean, Rabbi Isai? They will be lacking Seichel. You'll have Talmud HaChachamim, not few Talmud HaChachamim, you'll have Talmud HaChachamim, but they will be reduced because they will lack basic Seichel. Lublin, what did Lublin just say? They'll be the Chacham before the Mashiach come to Tamid Chacham. They don't have Seichel. How can you say such a thing? So I'm going to tell you the secret now. I didn't say it. I quoted it. The Maral in Paraglamet Hay of Netzach Yisrael, when he explains the Gemara, Tamid Chacham and Mismatim, he says that Tamid before Mashiach come, Tamid Chacham will lack Seichel. Enough said. We have to have a seichel yosher. We have to have a seichel. We're living in a period of time before Mashiach comes, where the Gemara says, Mamal explains that there'll be Tamida Chachamim who Pashit won't have seichel. And we will be led astray by them. We have to be careful not to be led astray. There are great Tamida Chacham that are talking with seichel. There is a great, great problem out there, a health hazard and people need to take care of themselves because that is the Ratzon Hashem. That is what God wants. God doesn't want you to fight him and say, God, I don't care what you send to the world. I'm going to show you I can overcome whatever you send at me. That's not what the Ratzon wants now. And it's clear. So everybody, please take care of yourselves. As a Ratzon Wise Paskin, think of your Matzif. You could be young, and have some chasom underlying conditions. You can be young with a child at home who may have some chasom underlying conditions, or a spouse that has underlying conditions. You may be older with or without underlying conditions. Think about all those things and what makes sense for you to do. Does it make sense for you to do to daven with an outside minion, even though it's outside? Are the outside meaning that you, is the outside meaning you want to go to? Observing the rules, social distancing, masks. I daven that a meaning for quite some time at an outside minion. And I stopped davening there because after Yom Kippur, reasons we won't discuss, after Yom Kippur, certain people became very makel and decided they don't have to wear masks. Until... One day, on the first day Sukkot, I was there, davening, a person behind me sneezing and coughing, and he's not wearing a mask. And um, I said something to him, whatever I said to him, and sort of the gabai of the minion came over to him and offered him a mask. And lo and behold, this person who's sneezing and coughing takes a mask out of his pocket. He has a mask. And he puts it back in his pocket. He won't wear the mask that he has, and he won't wear the mask that's been offered to him. So I stopped arguing at that minion. You have to make sure <clears throat> that you have a minion where people are following the rules. If they're not following the rules, you need another minion. If there isn't another minion, because of at home. The Rabbi Shalom wants Yidin to be healthy, in order to be able to do that ultimate thing we're waiting for, to greet Mashiach to Kena with a real dance and a real simcha, and we should be zeicher to have the seichel that we need to do the right things, but we should do them, and not do things we shouldn't be doing. And please take care of yourself. Before Shalema, to Moshe Zelig, Ben Rezel, and to all those Yidin who have other health issues, including all the people that are unfortunately sick with corona. They should all have a four shalema, the Sarek Shachal Yisrael. Those here that know the, those are four should have a four. Those here need Yeshua should have Yeshua. So you need Nechamas should have Nechamas. You need Brachas, they should have all the Brachas. Brachas, Yeshua, Nechamas, of course, can only come through the Rabbi Nishaloylam because he's the Echad Yachan Yuchad. It will come when he wants, how he wants to, how he wants to send it. And we believe in that, believe in the kishkis like that, 
Not only does it happen, but we bring about a gili hayichud in our lives and lives of the community. And when we finish our work here in the gili hayichud, the Bar Shalom will send Mashiach to Canaan today, Mamish, to finish the gili hayichud so that we can all be zaycha to greet Mashiach to Canaan and go to the base on Mikshim, have the main, everybody have a wonderful day.